Join Michael Voris in Tulsa, Oklahoma on October the 13th as he addresses sacred tradition and the rupture since the Second Vatican Council. Follow the link outside the screen to register today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. As many of you know by now, we have a regularly scheduled 8 p.m. Eastern Time weekly internet radio program on Blog Talk Radio. We call it Church Militant Miked Up. We've attached a link to the most recent broadcast for you to listen. That link's right on this page. We also produce a video version of Miked Up, shot and produced right over there on our Miked Up set during the actual live radio taping. If you are unfamiliar with Blog Talk Radio, it's pretty cool and is quickly establishing itself as the kind of internet parallel to traditional radio. The technology is pretty exciting and continues to grow exponentially and increasing at a dizzying pace. We take live call-ins during our hour-long show and get some really good questions. You may have gotten email or Facebook notices or Twitter notices from us the past couple of weeks since we've debuted. We'd like you, if you can, to listen in and invite your friends as well. Our shows are lively, there's spirited discussion, and whatever the current affairs are that are going on is what we're talking about that day. So, for example, and what we'd like to focus on on today's Vortex, during our last show on this past Wednesday night, a caller from San Diego rang up with a good question, asking whether Obama was trying to split the church and create a schism, all for his own political gain, of course. Great question and what's worth exploring for a little bit. In short, the simple answer is uh, probably not, at least not the way we Catholics understand schism and creating a division. That traditional Catholic teaching and morality is a block to Obama's communist socialist cultural agenda. There's no doubt about that. But when you consider Obama's history with the church, he would have no reason on earth to really understand what the church actually is. Why would he? His experience with the Catholic Church was with the near apostate version of the faith under Cardinal Joseph Bernadine in Chicago back in the 70s and 80s with its nonstop misguided and incorrect emphasis on social justice. This is the church that Obama knows. It was why when he was at Notre Dame being honored and celebrated by that same-minded church, he felt totally at home. He even thanked the now deceased modernist Cardinal Bernadine publicly from the stage. Obama is a non-Catholic product of that Bernadine machine, with its careful and nuanced sidestepping of Catholic moral teaching and its glorification of social justice. He learned all about community organizing at the feet of radical Catholic clergy who had been trained by none other than Saul Alinsky. Day after day, he had his head filled with idiotic notions that the church's main mission was to fight poverty here on earth and that the moral spiritual dimension eh, didn't really matter that much. It's a safe bet Obama, after years of hanging around with dozens and dozens of Chicago Catholic priests, has no idea what a rosary is, or benediction, or adoration, or why the church teaches what she teaches. So when he catches wind of these protests from traditional Catholics about his child-murdering platform or pro-same-sex marriage evil, he understands that we don't like it, but He's been taught to view such Catholics as sort of a radical fringe, totally unhinged and, you know, not with it, just not the cool Catholics. So it seems totally normal to him to have radical, feminine, lesbianism-loving nuns speak at his convention and see famous Catholics with the last name of Kennedy, for example, trot up on stage and declare their undying love for abortion. How could he think anything else? He has Catholic Nancy Pelosi and Catholic Joseph Biden whispering in his ears every day, telling him, oh, ignore the Pope, forget those medieval church teachings. He has Catholic Kathleen Sebelius enacting conscience-crushing rules in his Obamacare and never gives it a thought because to him, these people are the Catholic Church. Oh, sure, in his mind, the bishops have some kind of role, kind of like managers on a team, but totally free to be disregarded. This generation of Catholics, 60 and over, who have risen to power both in the church and the state, were totally and thoroughly corrupted by the Bernadine machine, and that's the case whether they lived in Chicago or not. Bernadine's influence, his shadow, stretched well beyond the Loop and the Dan Ryan Expressway, well beyond and is still felt powerfully even in today's major corners of the church. So why would Obama ever think there was a reason to create or foster a schism in the church? 
He sees the church as this almost monolithic structure that almost always votes majority Democratic, largely ignores its own moral teachings, whose bishops barely utter a word, if ever, against any of his Catholic buddies, who let them receive Holy Communion, allow them to keep calling themselves Catholic, let them keep speaking on Catholic colleges and campuses, and so on. He watches the Catholic governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, and his mistress sit in the front pew at Mass while the bishop there, Howard Hubbard, jokes and kids around with them and distributes the host to them. He hears the reports that the Archbishop of New York, Timothy Dolan, and his fellow bishops in New York barely lifted a finger to fight against gay marriage in that state and let it sweep into law. And then he hears reports that Cardinal Dolan actually apologizes for potentially hurting the feelings of any homosexuals because of stating church teaching. Then, at the end of all of that, he comes walking downstairs in the White House, goes into the White House mailbox, and there he has, from the leading bishop in the United States, who is not only a Cardinal Archbishop of New York, but also the president of the entire U.S. Bishops Conference, an invitation. He opens up the invitation, and it's to the grandest ballroom gala dinner that the church in New York has. He's been invited to make a few jokes, kid around and pose for a picture with this prince of the church, who is all smiles and joking and backslapping and cigar toting. Exactly where on earth would Obama ever get the idea that he is causing a divide or creating a schism in the church? What he sees is a church that agrees with him on nearly every piece of legislation that he puts forward happily shoots down traditional Catholics in a very public fashion like GOP vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan and his budget, musters a somewhat limp defense of traditional marriage in New York, and launches a PR campaign against a very small portion of his new health care law. No, what Obama sees is a pretty liberal church whose majority of members reject their morality, don't believe it's anything special, whose major bishops act that way, it has its fringe rem remnants, of course, a little group clinging to the old ways. In short, he sees it exactly like it is. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Churchmilitant.tv. Join us in combat. Like us on Facebook.